This is Exit and Emergency, episode 14. And let's start with the exit sign that's above my bedroom door. It might look a little bit different from most. You can see it has these four screws on there and it's a bit wider. And that is because it is an all conditions exit sign, which means it's vandal resistant. You can install it inside or outside and it'll resist things that are thrown at it or that hit it. This is by Lithonia, and they call this the extreme, or as my young self would say, extreme. So anyways, but yeah, it's an all conditions exit sign. Um, for places that you need a heavy duty sign that won't break as easily, and that's designed to handle harsh conditions. Um, so this one's in green, obviously. It's AC only, which means in a power outage, it will turn off. Um, it's pretty cool looking. It's probably one of my more favorite all condition exit signs. It's got a nice appearance to it. Let's look at the inside of this exit sign. So it's different from most exit signs, the way you open it. Again, there's these four screws that you have to get a special screwdriver to undo. You can see it doesn't look like a typical screw. This is a tamper resistant screw. Once you get those screws out, you can remove the face plate which is actually has two parts to it. There is the plastic protective cover and then the plastic exit face. So kind of neat. And here's the inside with all of the green LEDs. They look a bit different from most exit signs where they'll have the LEDs kind of down here shining up. But this style uses indirect LEDs. Um, so it kind of, again, shines a little bit differently. It's not like a direct view exit sign, but indirect view because it's not directly facing this, if that makes any sense. So pretty cool. There's one more part to take apart the exit sign. There's four more screws to take apart the um, LED panel, but there's really not much on the inside. It's just the wiring connection and that's about it. So that's the insides of the extreme. Another thing I like with the extremes is how large the arrows are. To me, large arrows on an exit sign are crucial because you want to easily see which way that the exit is. I know on some exit signs, the arrows are a lot smaller, which I've never really liked, but I do like them on this exit sign because they're large. You can easily see them from far away or if the exit sign is installed high up on a wall or a ceiling. So pretty cool. That's just a little detail that I like about it. Um, so since this is an all conditions exit sign, why don't we test that and see how durable it is? So here I have this like cork style um, drink coaster. So let's see if the extreme can handle this. Well, um, <laughs> looks good to me. I guess it passed that test. Of course, I'm just being funny. I don't really want to test this sign and potentially break it or damage it. Um, so I'm not going to really try to break it. Um, but actually, a long time ago, I had this sign installed in my garage. And there's probably an old video on my channel where I showed it out there. But it was installed maybe like seven feet from the floor. And I put a screw into the wall where, the, where there was no stud or an anchor. I never put an anchor in. And one night, this sign fell, you know, seven feet up from the wall and slammed against the concrete floor, and it's survived. There's really no damaging. There is a little bit of scratching up there from it. But other than that, it was okay. So maybe that was the real test with it. So anyways, that's about all there is to say about the Lithonia Extreme Exit Sign. So now let's move on to the next spot where we have a Surelights LPX exit sign combo. This one actually used to be installed in a real building, but I replaced it with a newer all LED combo because this one's getting older and it required a lot of maintenance and it was just easier and cheaper to replace the entire unit. Um, the LPX series by Surelights is notorious for having the LED exit lettering to get very dim over the years. Um, that's more of a problem with the earlier LPX exit signs and combos from like the 1990s to I think mid 2010s and past that, Surelights kind of fixed that issue. I know with the modern LPX uh, exit signs and combos, they've kind of fixed that problem so the exit lettering is a lot nicer. 
You can see on this one, it's getting really dim. It's very dim in person. That arrow right there is getting very dim. It doesn't even look like it's lit up at all. But I have to give this unit a bit of a pass because again, it was installed for over 15 years in a building. So of course it's gonna deteriorate a little bit. Um, and that's the other thing. There are a lot of plastic pieces that have broken off on this combo. But again, it's been installed for so long and with older plastic signs like this, that's kind of expected. So I can't be too harsh, but that's just another thing that these combos were known for doing. Um, we'll give this unit a test. It's got an LED exit lettering with incandescent emergency light heads. Um, pretty cool looking, I guess. They are neat combos. Just the uh, LED lettering is probably the worst thing about the older versions. Let's take a look on the inside of this combo. And actually, I have a piece of duct tape. It might be hard to see it holding the faceplate together because again, the sign is kind of deteriorating so the plastic parts are falling apart so it doesn't hold itself anymore so I have to use that tape kind of like a hinge but usually this faceplate just pops right off like any other exit sign. So here's the inside, there is the six volt lead acid backup battery and you can see all of the LEDs in there which are very dim. That one right there is even out completely. Um, there's the transformer, um, wiring connections, and some labels. You can see this one was manufactured in uh, August of 2003, so pretty old. Um, just about 20 years old, actually, as of me recording this video. On the other side of my room, we have this very small LED generic emergency light. This model in particular is branded by Philips and I actually like these. Again, they're very small and very low profile. As you can see, they don't take up a lot of space. Um, I think they're decent. We'll give it a test with the test button. And again, it's a decent brightness. I've seen better generics, but I've definitely seen a lot worse ones too. Um, I know you can find the unbranded version of these as well as the chloride branded version for like 20 or $25, they're very cheap. And at that price, I would say it's a value unit. It's again, decently priced for a decent unit. I think the Philips branded ones though, go for like 45 or $50, which at that point I would get a brand name unit that's actually decent instead of something like this. I just don't think that's worth it. But other than that, um, if you can get it at the right price, the adjustments on it are pretty interesting too. Um, when they're non-adjusted, it looks kind of interesting and adjusting them too. But I know there's a lot of installers out there that never adjust these because I guess they can't figure out that these actually adjust, but that's not really the unit's fault. So anyways, that's all that's going on over here. We are now without power and in emergency mode. You can see the Lithonia Extreme is off because again, it's AC only. But if we look down here, we can see some light from the LPX combo. So it's doing good. We have the right head adjusted to light up the door and the doorway kind of. And then the left head points down here just to light up this area a little bit. Um, again, it looks cool. I like it other than kind of the dim exit lettering, which I mean, again, I can't yell at it too much since it's been installed for a long time. So. Anyways, moving on, we have the generic emergency light, which again is decently bright. I think it's doing a great job lighting up this area. I pretty much have both of the heads just kind of adjusted just right here, but you can see how bright it is. So pretty good, I think. I like it a lot. And again, the low profile appearance is nice too. So anyways, that's all that's going on in my bedroom. Now we'll move on to the last exit sign spot. Moving on in here, we have a generic all LED exit sign combo. There's no brand or company that's rebranding this particular one. It's just left, again, unbranded. Um, it's pretty slick looking. I do like the red letters on the black housing. Um, this one also has a few features. Uh, first thing is it has expanded runtime or remote capacity, meaning this will either last um, longer in a power outage compared to standard units or you can connect remote heads to it. 
In my case, I just have it lasting longer in a power outage. I don't have any remote heads for this install. It also has an uncommon option with generic units. And if we take a look, there's a sticker down here. And there's also a green LED and green test button. And that is self-diagnostics. And what self-diagnostics is, it's pretty much a tiny computer on the inside of the unit that is always monitoring for any faults or trouble conditions with the combo. So, for example, if the battery dies in the unit, this green LED will blink red a few times and you can check on the sticker to see what the problem is. Um, there's a lot of different faults it can detect as well. Um, or if, you know, like the LEDs fail or some of the circuitry fails, it will let you know and you can either replace those parts or just replace the entire unit. Another feature it does, which is pretty helpful, is self-testing. This unit will test itself once a month for five minutes and once a year for 90 minutes. Um, and you can also do a manual test. If you just press the test button, it starts self-testing so you don't have to hold down the test button, which is pretty cool. And if we look over here, the LED is blinking green once which indicates a self-test condition. Um, it's decently bright. It's not the worst combo, but it's certainly not the best. Um, but pretty neat looking. I do like how most of the exit sign combos, regardless if they are brand name or generic nowadays, have this slim, low profile appearance. So, looks pretty neat. Let's take a look on the inside of the combo. Something else I'll mention about this, I don't know if it's just my particular model or if these just have an issue in general, but the red LEDs on the exit faceplate are flickering very faintly. The camera can't pick it up, but in real life when I'm looking at this, you can see the LEDs are just flickering, but just barely. Um, so here's the inside. There are all of the LEDs and uh, kind of a lot actually. Um, whoa. That's weird. <laughs> That's not happening in real life. I don't know why the camera's doing that. Um, anyways, so there's the AC connections, there's the backup battery, and uh, some of the other things, and there is the sticker on the inside. There's a model number on it, which makes me believe this is branded by someone. I don't know why the camera's picking this up. It's not flickering in real life. Um, anyway, but so yeah, that makes me think it is branded by someone, but the box had no branding and there's no other branding on the inside. One last thing I'll do is simulate a fault condition by unplugging the battery. So battery's been unplugged and you can see the AC light indicator is now red, which indicates no battery plugged in. And I'll plug the battery back into the circuit board and you can see it went green, meaning all normal. We are in emergency mode with the generic combo and it's doing a pretty good job. I have the right head angled to point right around here. I'd prefer it to be angled right here but the head adjustment doesn't point down all the way but that's okay. And for the left head it pretty much just points in the middle of the room kind of lighting up the general area so that's all that's going on in here. That's going to wrap up the 14th episode of Exit and Emergency. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and let me know in the comments section which unit you saw was your favorite. Of course, we had some different units to show in this video, but I think my favorite would be the Lithonia Extreme. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I guess I will see you in the next video.